This time around it's the turn of Microsoft Teams. What's new? What's cool? And more importantly, what can it do for you? Greetings YouTubers, welcome back to the channel. I'm Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP, as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. This week I'm in Oslo teaching a class, and I thought I would love to talk to you a bit about Microsoft Teams. Now, it's gone through a number of changes recently, and I thought, hey, this is a good opportunity to take you through some of those changes in the Administration Centre. Now, if you've not subscribed to my channel, please go ahead, click on that subscribe button, ring the bell, and you won't miss out on the good stuff in the future. Um, now, without any further ado, or any more jibber jabber, let's get to the demo. Here we go. So here we are in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, and first of all, I just want to draw your attention uh, to these cards. So these cards here, we can see one here for Microsoft Teams, and this is nice because at a glance, it tells us that Teams is on for my organization. I can check up the new uh, setup for Teams users, and also, very important, you can see I've got a green light for guest access. So pretty cool. What I want to do, though, is I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to come into the admin centers, and I'm going to click on Teams, and it's going to bring me into the new and, well, not new, but updated Admin Center. And the first thing you'll notice is that organizational wide settings is no longer here. And in fact, it tells you here that some of those settings have now been moved. And the reason for that was just to kind of really kind of clean up the menu, make it look a little bit more uh, easier to find things and so on. So kicking off, I'm going to kick on in the Teams area here. And of course, this is where we can manage our Teams and our various team settings. And here you'll see that we've got some of those settings here from the Update Center. So things like the Teams upgrade settings here. So if you're currently, for example, working on uh, Skype for Business, uh, you could have um, the opportunity here to upgrade. You can see, though, I'm already upgraded uh, to Teams here. Now, just a couple of kind of useful pointers, if you will. Um, uh, managing teams here, of course, you can add teams here. This is a great screen because it shows you how many channels, how many private channels, also how many guests have been invited to the teams and whether the channel is private or public. Um, you can customize everything here by having a look at the edit columns area here. Okay, uh, I, again, this is something that was announced a little while ago. The Teams templates, um, they have been updated. So if you want to make Teams templates available, so if I just quickly flip over and just open up Microsoft Teams, I don't know if you've seen this, but this really is uh, very nice, actually. So... I'm going to start off in the Teams client, and if I say, yeah, I want to go ahead and create a new uh, team, so if I just come into, let's say, Teams here, I'm going to go and say, join or create a team, and you, right away, you can start seeing some of the other teams that I've been invited to. Now, because these are public groups, I can go ahead and say, yeah, that's fine. I want to go ahead and join that team. Or if you've got a team code, you can go ahead and join that. Now, if I want to go ahead and uh, create a new team, I can either create a team from scratch. I can create a team or a group from a, a previously created one. But check it out. You've also got these really cool templates here. So things like projects, managing an event. So if you've got like a live event or something running, um, uh, an Office 365 adoption, you've got, you've got one here for onboarding employees, organizing a help desk, an incident response team. That's awesome, by the way. Crisis communications. And these are constantly being updated by the way so um, and some of these are great so think you know we've got medical ones here volunteers um just a word uh, 
a, a mention that some of these may not be included in your plan. So it really depends what kind of team's plan uh, that you have. So in terms of managing these then, as I said, you can come into the Teams templates here and you can see all of these templates are here. And the really cool thing about this is you can select this, you can edit this particular template and you can actually customize it. So again, I can add in kind of uh, the apps that I think are going to be really helpful for me as well as the different channels. So you can see we've got a number of channels here. I can go ahead and add in the uh, apps there as well. Um, so that's a really nice feature. You can then, of course, edit it. You can customize it and you can duplicate it as well. So one of the really nice things about those templates is that you can select a template and you can duplicate it and then you can customize the duplicated one. So, <clears throat> sorry, templates, definitely something that you should uh, definitely look out for. Now, the other thing that uh, has changed as well is if we go into the users area here, what used to be in those kind of global settings was guest access and um, external access. So just a quick mention about external access. The key word here is this, communicate. So external access, not to be confused with guest access, is all about how do you want your guest to be able to communicate. So for example here, you can either do this as, a, uh, as an allow list or as a block list. So I could say, yes, I want my teams to be able to communicate with all external domains, i.e. organizations and so on. Only specific domains or specific organizations and then you can do the block one as well. So you can either, you, you've got like this allow lists here, or you've got the block lists here as well. Okay, so this is definitely the default. Now, um, if you've got customers who use, for example, Skype and products like that, again, you can see this external users with Teams uh, accounts can be managed by an organization can contact users in my organization. So external users. Now, if you don't want that, it's important that you take that checkbox out there as well. So you can see this is blocking, this, this is basically sending the communication out, and this is uh, bringing the communication in. And again, here we have that public Skype users there as well. Now, the other option that we've got here was guest access. So guest access if you want to invite guests into your organization. So you can, you can invite guests if you are an owner within a Microsoft team. So I can go into uh, my teams here. So if I go into my team, and let's say I've got my project team here, I can easily just click onto the kind of general tab. Um, and I can also click onto the ellipse and I can manage my team. And I can see that I've got my owners. I've also got my members and guests here. And you could easily add a guest. So I could say James, I could say at mi6.gov. And I can then go in and I can add this uh, agent as my guest. Okay. So I now click on add and that will now add James or Jame, I've got to misspelt it. Uh, that will now add that in as a guest and it will go off and it will send an invite to that email address. OK, so somewhere right now, James Bond is receiving an email uh, for guest access. Very, very nice. Again, to do that, you really do need to be a group uh, owner or a team owner here. So the other settings that we have, what level of access do you want your guests to have? Do you want them to allow to make calls? Um, do you want them to participate in meetings and all the, the different aspects of messaging uh, and so on? So again, very important settings. This recently changed and the default is on. So if you don't want um, guest access, if you want to be completely internal, then you definitely want to switch that off because that's important.
All right. Um, now, in addition, if I go down to Teams devices, we also have other things here as well. So first of all, the number of devices in Teams has also increased. So we now have Teams rooms uh, that are running on Windows. So if you've got Windows 10 machines or um, and you've, you've got these flat panels with webcams, you can run um, Teams on those as well. Um, likewise, if you're running on Android devices, you've got Teams panels, phones, and also the different types of displays here. So the really the the number of uh, Teams options are really improving. By the way, okay. Now just scrolling down. So what else is new? Again, this used to be in the organization settings and it's now in the voice settings. And the voice settings seems to have really extended by the way. Um, so one of the things that we now have is a new feature called Operator Connect. So if you don't have, for example, your own um, kind of a Skype for Business server or your own infrastructure and you don't want to use Microsoft's then hey you don't have to anymore so again right throughout the world you can see that there are really quite a wide number of operators who can now provide you with the voice access okay and in fact since the last time I've looked at this demo it's really improved and really increased okay um, so the other things that were in the organizational wide policies, things like emergency policies, of course. So before you do any kind of Teams room systems, you need to have uh, an emergency address and also an emergency policy there. So if you know you've got a fire in your building and you dial nine one one or one one two or nine nine nine, then the emergency services know exactly where you are. Now, if you've not seen my full admin um, presentation on Microsoft Teams, then I really would recommend that you go off and see that. It goes into a lot of these features in an awful lot more detail. So this session is just really an overview of uh, some of those options. Okay. Now, the one thing I would say is if I go to, let's say, managing users here, just again, nice little top tip here. Um, here are some of my users. And if I go ahead and click on Alex, um, you can see that I've got Alex's details here. And if I scroll down, you can see that he's been pretty much set up for uh, teams. He's got a, a, a conferencing number in here. This is a conferencing bridge number. Um, I can see the voice, so I can choose, you know, am I going to allow Alex to have a domestic calling plan or an international calling plan, or indeed don't allow him to make calls. Um, you can also see um, any calls or meetings that he's done. You'll get a nice log file here. And we've also got a new feature called recent meetings as well. Uh, and again, you can... Uh, add that in there as well. Um, if I go into policies, this sometimes can take your breath away. So you can see here, we've, gosh, we've got an awful lot of policies here. So everything from an app policy to a live events policy, a meeting policy, a callings policy, it really can quite get overwhelming. Here's a top tip. So rather than dealing with that, one thing that you might want to think about is rather than having um, individual kind of policies and like template policies and calling policies and things like that, one of the things that you might want to do is you might want to bring in what we call policy packages here. So a policy package, these are what we call personas. So for example, primary school, a high school student, lecturer, somebody who works in healthcare. And you can see here that if I click in, that it's a combination of policies, all suited for this particular persona. And of course, one of the nice things about this is you can select it and you can then uh, add to it. You can customize it and you can also manage the users who will have access 
uh, to this policy and I can then assign this policy to a group or a team of users. So that's really nice. So the other things that were, that were in the organizational wide settings, ladies and gentlemen, include the planning option and two tools here. One is the Teams Advisor. So with the Teams Advisor, uh, again, we have a number of different features that you can deploy. And I can click into these and I can then say, yep, yeah, hey, I want to go on, uh, for example, have a look at the different um, features in here. So you can see that we've got a number of different uh, options. I can click into, let's say, building my adoption plan, and it will give you a really nice kind of plan that you could, you know, do a checklist for. Um, and, you know, so if you want to know what's the right way, what's the recommended way to deploy some of these features, because they can be quite complex, then some of these uh, deployment features here, then they're really nice. Okay, so like I said, um, you used to be able to find them in the organizational wide settings, but they're now here in the planning settings as well. Now, in addition, of course, you've also got the network planner, and this can be really useful, especially in a hybrid scenario. So with this, you can uh, obviously uh, configure your different sites and you can plan for the amount of traffic that you think that that's going to go through there. Remember when you plan for traffic, it's not just the really the meetings, but it's all the other stuff that goes through there as well. So things like if you're sending very large files or you're making a lot of audio and video conferencing calls, um, you've got to take that uh, into account there as well. Um, also in here, we have a whole range of uh, analytics and reporting tools here. Um, including the newly relocated call quality dashboard. All right. So again, it says you need to log in for this. I go, yeah, no problem. That's fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and sign in. And th again, this is a really useful tool. Strangely, it hasn't been really updated. It would be nice to see an update on this. It's been pretty much the same for a long time. Um, but call quality dashboard, really nice. Um, so again, you can monitor the, the quality of your calls and meetings here. Um, again, useful thing, you might want to set up some notifications and alerts here. And you can go ahead and you can edit many of these. Okay, so things like if um, this one's a default one in here. Um, so if, if a link state, for example, changes, then it will keep you up to date. So if you want to check out uh, my other Teams videos, which go into many of these features in great detail, then go ahead and check out my Teams playlists on this very channel. So there you have it, the latest on Microsoft Teams administration. Thank you so much for dropping by. I really appreciate it. Now, do remember, if you've got any comments, questions, or feedback, please pop them down below, and I will do my best uh, to answer them for you. And as always, if you've not subscribed to the channel, please go ahead, click on that subscribe button, ring the bell, and you won't miss out on the good stuff in the future. So, until next time, thank you very much for joining me, and uh, goodbye from Oslo. See you soon. Take care. Thanks for dropping by, hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and click on the subscribe button and ring that bell and you won't miss a thing. See you next time.